relegation, he'll be the talk of that particular town. Oh, you're so feisty, pugnacious, a ginger Jack Russell snapping at a thousand heels. For Aberdeen, for Scotland, for Manchester United, for Leeds. Goal scorer, ball winner, player of the season at 34, still going strong at the top level as 40 approached. Titles and cups, wherever he went. Never give up, never say die, get stuck in, lead from the front. What me ref? A winner, not a quitter. All five foot five inches of him. Don't forget the half. From player to manager, still just as feisty, still just as pugnacious, passionate, endearing, heart on the sleeve, the most charismatic manager in the Premiership, determined that Coventry will stay there, and they yet might. Exhausting, fighting the good fight right to the end. A man who once had crockery thrown at him by Alex Ferguson and lived to tell the tale, Gordon Strachan. <laughs> Most managers go mad in the dugout on a Saturday afternoon, but you seem to go madder than most. Do you actually enjoy it? Yeah, I love it. I've tried a couple of times to try and keep cool and it doesn't work. It's no me. I think if you've got to be anything in life, you've got to be yourself. And uh, I really am enjoying myself there. I think I'll have a heart attack if I try to keep in my, my emotions and passion. Because, I mean, that picture behind you is, is sort of is the great image that we have of you at the moment this season, especially the pressure you're under at, at Coventry City. Do, I mean, do you wake up on a Saturday morning and you're in a state before you even started almost? Yeah, not really. I'm okay. I'm fine at Saturday morning. That picture, that's, that's the way I, I was brought into the world, screaming and greeting. That's <laughs> <laughs> probably the way I'm going to go. So, so talk us through the, sort of the, the psychological roller coaster that you go through between sort of 3 and 10 to 5 during a match. Because um, I watch the, you know, Ulier sometimes gets a bit agitated, but I watch some people who just sit there, impassive throughout a whole game, analytically. Like Jean Tigana of Fulham does that, and I don't know how he does it. I know, he's got great players and he won the league by about 20 points, so it's more, it's more relaxing when you've, got, when you've got good players, it's like uh, Arsene Wenger, you can sit back and go, this is fantastic. But when my boys are struggling and trying to do their best and they need a bit of help, because I've got a very young side, you know, as young as there is in the, in the Premiership, and, um, and I do feel for them at times, but it sees it being more relaxed when you've got good, real good world-class players running about you. How, how would you describe your, your style of managership? Are, are you, a, are you dis disciplinarian? No, I don't think so. I, I get close to my players and people say you've got to be detached from your players and you've got to be like uh, other managers of the past. I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can copy anybody's style. I don't think I could copy Ron Atkinson. You know, I don't think I'd enjoy the white suit and the, the bracelets and all the rest of it. I don't think it'd be me. And I couldn't be Alex. Uh, and I, I, and I, I'd have to be myself. So because I like laughing and joking with players, I'll join them with laugh and joke at training. But they know when I'm serious. They honestly know when I'm serious. So I, I, I I, I do the job the way I like to do it, by enjoying myself. I don't want to change my personality just to be a manager. But if you get that close to the players, it's possible to get too close, isn't it? W when they play badly, do you feel personally let down? No, not at all. Uh, I've never had that problem. I've been looked after at the club since I've been here. I've, I've still got three that have been with me all the time. Telfer, Shaw and Williams, and they can't be any better. I know them the best. Uh, not at all. Now you mentioned Fergie, inevitably people always, you know, who? Um, we were wondering when this question was coming. No, no, I was you know, no, nothing sort of controversial about this, but just, just what lessons have you, did you learn from him that you've been able to absorb into your career as a manager? Uh, well, you must listen to the manager or else. I think that's what you learn from Alex. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, the discipline about bringing up youngsters, we find that very helpful. Uh, we have got four that's come from the youth side, in our team just now, and uh, I've known him since I was 15, and I got involved with him then, and he did that, Alex did that at Aberdeen, got involved with kids, and seen the mums and dads when they signed, and things like that, and being close to the kids, so you know their personality, so I know Barry Quinn, Marcus Hall, uh, Chris Kirtland, uh, John Eustace, and my son, I know him quite well as well, so, uh, <laughs> we get to know their personalities, Mm. And their boys will do anything for the club now because we've looked after them. And I think that's what Alex done at, at Manchester United. He's looked after them since 15, protected them from the press. Um, one he can't do anything about, obviously David. But the rest of them are absolutely fantastic. Great discipline. I think that's what we 
try to strive our club. So, so why did he throw the crockery at you? He didn't like me for 15 seconds. <laughs> um, but that's been well documented, really. And, and, and I'm bored telling it now, to be honest with you. Okay. And I don't want to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, it always struck me as you always struck me as the sort of player that managers would find it hard to dislike because you always gave 100%, come what may. And for a very long time. I mean, there you were. At, Ron Atkinson said, what, th said you were the best looking or the fittest. Not the best looking. No, sorry, never say that. Because no, that, that, <laughs> that would have been a lie. No. Uh, but, <laughs> But he did have to join it as well, you know. <laughs> but he did say you were the fittest 39-year-old in the world, apart from Raquel Welsh, didn't he? So how much, how, how much, you know, do you regard your body as a temple? How much have you been looking <laughs> after it all these years? And, yeah. You know, cause with the diet that you've had and the seaweed and all that sort of stuff. I, I, been... was, I wasn't good when I was youngster. I was poor. Um, I, I got brought up in, a, in an environment where it was, it was right that you should go drinking on a Thursday night. I didn't know any better. It was only when I went to Aberdeen I started um, looking after myself a bit better. Then I... I started taking things like, uh, I've always worked hard at training, no matter what I tell you, what I've ate, it doesn't work unless you discipline your life to football. I took, I took seaweed, didn't help me as a player, but I'm a better swimmer. I'm <laughs> <laughs> right now at the swimming. Uh, pasta, you know, the funny thing about people, I asked some Wenger for pasta dinners to um, Arsenal a couple of years ago, we were doing the Aberdeen 15 years ago. So Alex had been on the ball since then. He's, he was right in the front doing all these sorts of things. You mentioned your sons. Have you managed to instill in them the need to have that kind of disciplined approach to professional sport as well? Yeah, uh, the, the, the older one, he's well disciplined, but the second one, he's, he's a party monster. So he's does that mean, does that he's mean a bit like his mum. <laughs> <laughs> does that mean he won't make it? Sorry? Does that mean he won't he's make it? He's got every chance of making it if he's a party monster. <laughs> Fine. Now look, you mentioned your wife, and I can't be too many, there can't be too many football managers who take their wives to matches, I don't know, in Rochdale on a Tuesday night as scouting missions, but I gather your wife has done that regularly, year on year. Um, how much is that at your instigation, and how much because she actually loves the game? We met when I was 17, and uh, we're still going strong now. I had an overcoat on. She's been with her all the time. It's, 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 it's a good time that you, you, you spend three or four hours in the car. You can actually speak and see how the kids are going and everything like that. I'd rather take her along with me, you know, because she has good fun. Ha has she ever spotted a player and you've thought, yeah, you're right? I've never spotted a player. I've not spotted a player before. <laughs> Inevitably, people will to look at Coventry and say, well, 34 years in the top flight of football, and it matters so much to the people of Coventry that you stay there. And every year, we sort of get to the first, second week of April, and it's, oh, Coventry having another relegation battle. It's usually the first week of October. <laughs> <laughs> Do you resign oh, Well, to be fair, in the yeah. last three years, oh, we've yeah, never so had any problems, sure, yeah. to be honest with you. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a kind of an urban ugly, myth. Ugly head yeah. Again, yeah. But so when you get to this stage of the season, how agonised are you? Are you thinking, oh my God, we've just got to escape? <clears throat> I, I, um, it can be a problem if I let myself get involved in the, the fantasy stress that's out there. Uh, the television, the radio, the, 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 the pre press um, that can evolve and I can, if I want to get involved in that, that will affect me. But all I really need to hunt for is the people who care about Coventry and they're the only people I need to, to, to do my job for. Uh, I only feel stressed because of them. If I'm stressed, I feel hurt because of them. I need to do my job for them, nobody else. So if, if I stick to reality, and the reality is only trying to do a job for the Coventry fans and don't keep anybody else happy, pundits, anything else and I'm okay. I mean, the reality stress is being a farmer. That's reality. I live in a fantasy world. I've got a great world. Uh, whatever you think. I've, there's ups and downs now and then. But I wouldn't swap it for anything. Well, you mentioned uh, the responsibility to fans. We've got a, a Coventry fan coming on next, actually, because uh, sport and comedy don't usually mix, except perhaps in the footballer's haircuts. Uh, but when this man...